Well, today it's a winter wonderland. And about three or four inches of snow overnight, which is beautiful. So, I had some thoughts last night. Got to put on my little Ben Franklin specs for it. A few questions people have asked and other thoughts. Okay, about the trailer. You will suffocate with all that insulation because I put all the foam and, and, uh, and uh, plastic on the windows and all that stuff. Um, no, you won't suffocate. Uh, there is still air getting in. It's not, it's not watertight. It's not airtight in any way. If you stuck your A-liner in a lake, it would sink pretty quickly. There's still ventilation holes, the shower drain, and of course, I've got that vent in the door, which I use, and I actually had it propped open. Winter camping is for extremists only. Well, not really. Living in a cardboard box and yellow knife in the middle of winter, I think that's pretty extreme. To me, it's more a question about, uh, you know, you buy a trailer, what can you do with it? And some people, will buy a trailer, and I don't care what kind it is, mobile home, trailer, RV, whatever, and they'll use it for two weeks of the year. And, and it's 50 weeks, it's, it's, it's all stored up. You know, I, I drive by these uh, RV storage, storage lots all year round and, and look and say, why are they there? Why aren't people using them? If you've got a trailer, if you've got a, an A-liner, why not use it all year round? That's all I'm saying. Um, A-liner is ill-suited for winter, yes, a A-liner out of the box is ill-suited for winter, but the same goes with any trailer. They are all ill-suited for, for winter. Trailers are not meant for winter. The only trailers that are suitable for winter are ones that have been customized. Ones that have got the Arctic upgrade with the double pane windows and the extra insulation. That's not off the lot. You have to ask for that. You have to get that and you have to pay money for that. All I'm saying is you can take an ordinary trailer, a little bit of fixing up and make it winter ready. So, and that's what I've done and that's what my videos are about. Now, sitting out here in a snowstorm is not everybody's cup of tea. Um, but I'd rather be out here in a snowstorm than in a rainstorm. So it's actually quite, it's quite beautiful here. You know, the deer don't care, they're out there grazing. You don't get that uh, intimacy a lot in the summertime, especially when a place like this is to capacity. They've reserved weeks in advance, so you can't even get into a place like this. The bottom line is if you like nature, get out and enjoy it. Don't make excuses. If you if you want to hibernate, do so. You know, but I don't. I like being outdoors. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy. And there's always something different that I learn. So, if you like it, get out and enjoy it. Oh yeah, I should talk about personal items like uh, clothing and stuff like that. As along with the the totally cool Arctic slippers. Um, I have winter boots, I have uh, winter socks, thermal socks. In my pockets I have the hand body warmers. They're, they're, they're available for feet, for hands, or for bodies. They're just warming pads, instant pads. They're really handy to have. Um, I have two pairs of gloves. These are the, just the, the, uh, the thin gloves, but I have the thicker ones. And lock de-icer. There's no point in keeping it in my, in my car if I freeze the lock, so I always keep that in my pocket. Uh, toques, the one-piece thermal underwear, head to toe, one-piece, you know, with the little, little pocket in the back. Uh, you need it when it's cold out like this. So in the first cold camping video I did, I showed you the stuff that I kept in the back of my uh, Jeep. And uh, it's really not that much different. It's the same stuff, lots of tools, first aid kit, shovel, and all that. The only things that I brought that are different are, I brought a blowtorch. 
And the reason I brought that is that if I, if, if for example the stabilizers or something gets totally frozen up from slush, I can heat it off if I can't chip it off. So I thought a, uh, a blowtorch would be a good idea. I also got a traction, it's called recovery tracks. This is like a roll up rubber uh, track for under your, under your wheels. I had a metal one before and I still have it. The only thing I don't like about that, oh, sorry, there's a magpie that was looking at me here. The only thing I don't like about the, uh, the metal one is that it rusted and it left a stain all over my, uh, my trunk. So, now this is actually not salt, it's gravel. I just put it in an old salt container. So again, for traction, some people use, ki some people use kitty litter, but this actually, the gravel was actually cheaper. And uh, so there's my gravel. I've got this PowerMate uh, battery charger, which I'm really glad I had it yesterday because I needed it. To be honest, it, it worked, but it's not enough. It's better to get something else to power up your battery than something this small. But if you have nothing else, at least have one of these. If you're boondocking and you can't plug in, when it gets minus 20 uh, Celsius, you know, minus 5 Fahrenheit, uh, your car probably isn't going to start without something. After returning, I picked up this neat lithium ion jump starter and battery bank. I hope to review it in a later video. And that's about it. The rest go to my uh, cold camping boondocking video and you'll find out the rest of the stuff. So if you are planning a trip where it's really, really cold, I'm going to give you a list of things that freeze that you might not have thought of. And I've found some of them by experience. Things like vegetable oil. I had to uh, thaw that out to actually use vegetable oil. Shampoo, toothpaste, uh, my barbecue lighter would not work. I had to warm it up to make it work so I could light the stove. Canned goods will freeze. Um, the problem with that is when you open them up, you can't get anything out because they're frozen. So that could be a hassle if you're planning on, uh, you know, canned spaghetti or soups or something like that. Uh, batteries freeze and they don't work very well. And uh, ketchup will freeze. Water obviously freezes but soya sauce does not freeze. So if you got nothing else, at least you have some soya sauce. However, one thing that does not freeze is windshield wiper fluid. And you can spray this. Um, if you've got something you gotta clean up, you can try windshield washer fluid because that does not freeze, at least till minus 40 or something like that. One more thing we need to talk about, and that's poop. If you're actually off the grid and uh, boondocking, dry camping, whatever, and there's no facilities. It's a bit of a problem if you've got an onboard toilet if it's below freezing. And it's four degrees Fahrenheit minus, minus 15 Celsius. So it's cold. Now the neat thing about poop is poop freezes. Rather than maintain water in your toilet, RV sanitizer freezes as well. And I know some people have suggested putting uh, antifreeze, uh, which you could do. But I have another solution. And that's if you want to use your toilet, leave it dry, bag it. Put a bag over it underneath the uh, seat and bag your poop. Because you can take your poop and you can put it in like an ammo box like this. I've got an ammo box right here that's got a seal to it. And the nice thing about poop when it's cold is it doesn't stink. So you can put it in bags, put it in an ammo box, and you never know it's there. Once you're away and you can dispose of it. And it's really handy. See, there's a nice seal there. And you got keep your poop all nice and frozen. But it's good for old Henry bars as well. I haven't used it yet. Now the temperature has actually gone up. Uh, right now it's only about, uh, it's about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about minus 7 Celsius. So it's a lot warmer. 
almost t-shirt weather. Um, because that a lot of the condensation is gone, all the metal is bare, there's no frost on it. It's probably going to get a little colder tonight, but at least now because I've got dry heat, I'm probably not going to get as much condensation. So uh, I can use my little 1500 watt ceramic heater and that's all it takes right now. There's definitely bonuses with hookups. So it's really, it's definitely nice in the winter time when you can get somewhere where you're comfortable and stay warm. And it's also nice if it's free, but if it's not, it's not the end of the world to have to pay for a campsite, um, especially when the temperature is severe. Yeah, I like boondocking, but there's times like this one where is it worth the risk? I don't know. I think when I was on propane, sounds like I'm on cocaine. When I was using propane, I was a little antsy, um, knowing that it was gonna run out. Whereas uh, when you're using electricity, you know you, you're good. Uh, it's gonna keep you warm. I certainly like to conserve energy and I like being off the grid, but I don't have to be off the grid all the time if it's not practical. And every once in a while, it's just okay to have fun and relax and enjoy a campfire. So this is where I get to use up all the uh, little bits of paper that I've used over the last couple of days. The summer was a fire ban, almost the whole summer and fall. Now the snow's here, I'm not too worried. That's a nice fire. It's just starting to snow and there's an owl behind me. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, happy camping all year.